Hi guys, it's Andreas from Bislabs Videos. Uh, today I want to share a tip, uh, something that I learned recently from Mixamo to Blender to set up some characters in the scene. I found it really, really useful, so I thought I would be sharing it with you guys as well because it's something that I've been looking for for quite some time now. So I hope you all know about Mixamo, it's part of the Adobe family, it's been bought some years ago. Uh, it has characters and animations. So the the thing we want to do in this uh, little test here, this little uh, demo, is to take characters, add animation, and add them into Blender, and then create a scene with uh, frames taken out from these characters. So I thought it would be funny to have the sample character, but I'll just show you where I found them. So there's all these different kind of characters that you can add to the uh, scene, and then in the animation you can add animations to whatever kind of character you have selected. So currently I have the zombie character, so I'll just type in walk and it'll get all kind of walk cycles and I can add these walk cycles and I'll just add here in place so I can see what's going on. So this is like a standard kind of walk and I can see what, like is this better for a zombie? So like what kind of mood am I going for? Maybe this could be funny for a zombie. Um, but I can also just type in zombie and I'll see what I find. So there's of course all kind of stuff that applies to zombies. <laughs> Kicking in doors. So I was thinking more like a walk kind of thing that so where I could use. So let me just see there's like this running zombie. Maybe that would create something cool. I was more, f in my mind I had this idea of this slow walking, maybe not this like super stereotypical zombie like these, but more like, just like normal walks. So let me just check this. No, oh, let me just go back to walk and see if there's any of these that could be applied. This is pretty stereotypical zombie walk as well. So let me just. Is it just normal something like? I mean, this is a this is quite okay. It makes it look not that goofy and something like. So I think I'll just try to go with this. So what I have now is I'll just press this up here, download, and it will prompt me in the download settings saying what kind of uh, file do you want to get down, and I want an FBX and all the standard settings basically. So just download. And it's a little more than 100 megabytes, so it will take a little bit of time. So I'll just take one more character, uh, or one more animation down, just so that there is uh, two different versions that I can choose between. So maybe I'll just type in zombie and see if there's anything I can find in here that is not completely zombie stereotypical goofy. Mm, I mean, I like it, but I'm not sure if. I know to help with it. Let, let's download this one as well. Same thing, download, and it will take a moment because it's pretty large. So when they're down here, I'll just pop them in a folder and then import them into Blender. And here we got the same one going. So I will see you in a second when all of these are downloaded. Okay, so the guys has been downloaded, and now I'm going to Blender. I'll just find my work make some more test and i got two studies now i got the walking and the running so I'll just double click in the import of the fbx and i got him in here now so as you can see this guy comes in with all his animation so that means that we have right around 40 frames of animation to do with so I'll just add in a ground plane for this guy and in my limited understanding of Blender yet, I haven't found out how to take them out of the rigs or the amateurs as it says up here. If any of you guys have a good idea how to do this, I would love to hear it in the comment because I haven't yet figured out. So what I do is up here, once you import your character, I'll, I'll do it with the second one as well. I'll import FBX, zombie running, up, oh, and then this guy comes in. So now I have my two characters here. I just place them a little bit out of frame because I want I want this to be my sort of working field. So I don't want these rigs to interfere with it. But that means I have amateur one and amateur two. So I'll just go into this one, select this one, shift D 
to duplicate. So as you can see right now, they're still tied up to the rig, so this spares out pretty badly. I'll just press escape, go into the modifier, and apply the modifier. So that means that right now, this guy, he's free of the rig, so I can now play the animation, and it doesn't affect this guy because I applied the modifier to him. So he's no, no longer con uh, constrained to the rig. What I still do not understand is how to take them out of their group here. So if there anybody who has like a super great idea of how to like sort of take them out when you're done with the, the rig, let me know. So right now I'll just jump to the next frames because I want a more unique silhouette. So what I'm looking for here now is that I have this kind of body silhouette, but I want a new silhouette. So when is the next time he looks like here, he looks kind of the same, but this, this is actually nice. Like, Need pose, Couldn't shift D again, escape, just to make sure that it doesn't go bananas. G, shift Z, more. Now we got him here. So I'll do the same with the other guy. And I will take this brick. Uh, they do sort of look a little bit similar, but let's go with what we have here. Apply this one as well. G and Z. And we'll find a new frame for him as well. Uh, this looks pretty okay. Shift D, escape, apply a modifier, G, shift Z. So, in a very short amount of time, I have four sort of unique looking characters. And as you can see, Mixamo, you can get, I mean, go crazy. What I want is a lot of zombies just walking. So, I could spend a little more time just finding some really good walks, but I think this is good enough for now. So the next thing that the next thing I realized is when you go into render view, you'll have a little bit of problem. That takes a little bit of time to look at the maps. Pink, there we go. And I'll just change the light because we can't see otherwise. As you can see, they come in like super, super shiny, like they're coated in oil. And I really don't want that. So I'll just pop up a new screen, pop up like this. Go up here in editor type, just choose shader editor. I'll select one of these guys and so oops, what I found out here is that the roughness is connected to this map, but it does seem like it's a bit shiny. So what I did here is just to uh, shift A, find color, brightness, pop it in here, and then just put a little bit up. Not all the way because then it becomes really like dry skin. I still want a bit of shine. So what I tried to experiment with a little bit was to add a bit more contrast just to, like I can just show you if it becomes super, super shiny like this. You can see if I play with the contrast, or maybe it became too much, like this. You can see how it focuses when I add, increase the contrast and it sort of blurs things out. So if I want them, something on the skin, like so sort of wet patches i can increase the brightness and i can take this a little bit up so it still has this uh damp feeling of skin but the pants right now they look <laughs> it looks like this uh the bad guy from the second terminator movie so i'll just take this one again move this guy out add color brightness and this one i just want to increase I'm not really sure that I want anything like specularity on on these pants. Uh, they should just be feeling quite dry. So of course this affects this character as well because they copied from the same guy. But I need to do the same for the other two guys. So I'll just take this, add a brightness, and add this a little bit and take this down. And do the same for the second one as well. Call brightness dot and just increase this. Yeah, we're going to clip my other little savers. Okay, so now we have these guys set up. So the reason why I took out this window here is because I uh, control space, by the way, control space to change windows. Um, is because I al al always have this as my camera view. So I press N and then uh, just align this a little bit better. Something like this. 
And I go to like here, view, lock camera view. So right now I have my camera. And I want to go in and select my camera, go in here, uh, view display, pass two. And then just take this up, empty, and then take everything off that disturbs me. Because I want this as a clean, clean looking render. So right now this is my camera view. So I think it needs a little bit more atmosphere. Right now we just have these four guys walking on night. So that's why I take out this one because I normally use it as my shader editor. So go here, press the world and find it here. And I'll just search for the scatter, volume scatter. Connect that one and density down because it was a little bit too aggressive and then give it some sort of nice psychedelic scent. And just start to play around with this just because right now we have all the components so now it's just a matter of composing the image so just place these guys here so what i did in in my uh, experimentation to to get to this point is that i want to have some sort of like center character so i'll place my camera something like this because i don't want them to march toward the camera i want them more like them just marching past us so just take this out just dial dial it down a little bit this, so i don't feel it's super important to build an environment this is more like just showcasing how this works going to so what character do i want in the foreground maybe i want him maybe he looks a little bit too aggressive, maybe. Huh. So now <laughs> I'm just basically just testing out like what, what character, what is silhouette would be nicest in the foreground. Because I just make one character stand out at this focus and then have the rest of them as a sort of background characters. So I guess something like this. Let me just check it out. Maybe nah, I said pose is too wild. Maybe they nah. I'm f overthinking this again now, so I just want to pose things out a little bit. So something like this. I'll just place him on the sort of the third here. So if you think of dividing everything into thirds, I'll just place him in this marker here and then Start populating the background with some more characters. Maybe just to add a little bit more volume just to bleed out the edge of this plane. And of course, we can duplicate as many as we want so that we get a nice thick, dense crowd. And of course, just move them out where they make sense according to the camera. And I will take um, whoever I duplicate, I'll try to place them so it's not super obvious that they're clones of each other. So I'll just make sure that I, I can sort of see that this, this, this is the same. I haven't used this one here, so I guess I can use this one. And let me just see. I can make a little bit of a pack of them here. Maybe I need a bit more density behind here as well. So let's just check out here. So of course we can also experiment a little bit with this depth of field. Maybe that would do something good for us. I'll just select this character. And then you can play with the f-stops to, to increase or decrease. So if we go up, the focal, uh, the, the area where it focuses, it gets wider. If you take the f-stop down, it becomes more blurry in the background. So let's see if that does something good to us. Sort of, if we just, Take the world color a little bit down. Maybe add a bit more ambient occlusion. And 
it, I think, is sort of from here on, it's just noodling. So I could say that this is my first frame. I maybe just, let me just check out the light. Where did that? Oh, it was here. So the lighting should probably be, as you can see now, they're silhouetted because it's from behind. And now it's, so maybe we'll have the light. So let me just play around a bit with the light because that could be interesting because it's, it like radically changes the image right now. They're all like silhouetted, but then the, the, the ground comes super, super obvious. So maybe we just like here, the silhouette of them, like it doesn't stand out that nicely. So, oops, let me just try maybe something like this backlit and then just to pop this character up, just put a light here, dial it way down and then just add maybe some nice healthy green glow. I'll just move it a little further out and this light should be quite, um, it shouldn't be as pointy as this so I'll just increase the radius so it feels more like it's coming from uh, maybe a, a diffuser of some sort and it's still way too powerful so just dial it down, maybe a bit more down. So something like this. So I'll just make a couple more uh, like short findings and then add them to Photoshop and I guess I'll conclude my tutorial inside Photoshop just looking at the images that I took out. So a little bit of fast forward while I find the rest of the shots. this little mini tutorial. Um, as you can see, it's pretty fun to shot find inside Blender. It's pretty easy as well. I just took screenshots and dumped them directly into Photoshop for me. That's pretty easy. Um, so it's more just to like showcase the range and variety. And then for, of course, uh, in here, you can start to paint over inside Photoshop as well. And I mean, this is just like one character out of uh, like a whole bunch that is inside Mixamo. So it's, it's really, really useful to like whatever you can make out of this character gallery in here paint like paint over get get the factor shot in blender and then paint over in photoshop i think this is something that you can really like find powerful and, and, and useful to use in your scene to start populating your world so i hope you found this useful if you found a nice hack for this a nice not hack but a nice way to do this with the amateur please let me know because i would love to know these kind of things um, other than that, really, I hope you found it useful and uh, yeah, see you in the next tutorial. Bye.